Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 86 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I want to show you guys a little tweak that I made uh, between last episode and this one regarding this guy. In the past, I had to request a certain number of smooth stone, and it would get produced, and it would automatically go into the center chest until it filled up. But it wouldn't actively create smooth stone and forcibly keep this chest full. It would only dump out whatever smooth stone already existed in the system uh, to make the chest full. So, I made a little change. We've got a bunch of cobble, obviously, uh, and uh, up here you can see it's currently crafting smooth stone for me. Good. Why is it doing that? Because I went ahead and made this nifty little gadget right here. Uh, this is the ME interface, which you guys have seen before. I set it up to export uh, config about, you know, two three stacks of smooth stone here. And what it's doing is it's constantly trying to satisfy that request. It's it's making as much smooth stone as it can to fill up the three stacks of smooth stone I told it to keep uh, in the buffer. So it's gonna constantly produce more because it's trying to get as much as it can. And then here, uh, we've got the under chest set up to fill up. And then we did some gates, right? So we just set uh, space and inventory, emit a red pipe signal. Cool. And uh, over here, we've got this guy, red pipe signal on, energy pulser. So what's happening then is uh, we've got the ME interface filling up, and it's instantly exporting it out into the ender chest as long as there's space in the inventory. Now, if I pull some out, what's going to happen is it's no longer uh, going to uh, be full. It'll have space again, so it'll emit that red pipe signal and start pumping out again. Cool, right? Um, and then uh, once that space is filled up, then it's no longer emitting the pipe signal and it starts refilling again. So we'll keep three stacks of uh, smooth stone <clears throat> in here in the exported items buffer. And once those three stacks are completely filled up, and I could probably even shrink that down to one stack. Let's let's pull these two out. Boom. Now it's satisfied. It's no longer uh, producing smooth stone. And we have a pretty nicely automated smooth stone production system. So it'll continuously cook up as much as it needs to keep the whole thing satisfied. And you can see no longer is the crafting monitor running. Pretty neat, right? So that is the design uh, for that thing. Now, in this episode today, I would like to work on this guy over here. Right there, the mob spawner's age I told you guys about. Uh, so I will be filling up an area here, and I will probably uh, need to design a couple things. First off, I want to have the nifty on-off switches I told you about. I want to have the auto mob spawning. I want to have the auto mob killing. And then the automatic uh, item collection system that I had in mind for this whole shebang. So there's a couple things that I want to get working on. Uh, what I'm thinking, though, is I need to uh, work on that Vajra. I told you guys that I'd be uh, setting that up last episode, and uh, I did do some of the setup required for it. So let's head in here. This is actually going to help us out a bit because, uh, you know, there's a couple things we can do with this. But anyway. Anyway, let's see. I want to make this nifty little gadget right here. Okay, now the Vajra, uh, this thing, requires the core. Okay, the core requires some iridium plates. Uh, it requires some magnetron, which requires a uh, superconductor. So we're going to need uh, probably all told one superconductor for this guy. And then we're also going to need two more superconductors. So let's see. I've actually gone ahead and set up the crafting thing for all the superconductor and the prerequisites combined. So over here we can see we've got everything we need. I told it how to make uh, iridium from 7UU matter. I told it how to make uh, the Lapitron crystal, the uh, compressed iridium plates. I've got the uh, uh, the superconductor covers, the superconductors, the glass fiber cables, everything we need to make superconductors. So like I said, we're going to need three of these things, so let's let it rip. Now I'm going to uh, go off camera for a few moments, go ahead and craft some of the other stuff that's not quite as important. So uh, these things are obviously easy to get, but we're also going to need a couple extra iridium plates. Uh, that should all be easy to make. We're going to need uh, the Tesla coil and the HV transformer. Not a big deal, but I'm going to go ahead and make those off camera. All right, we mostly have everything we need here. I've got the core, I've got the advanced alloys, this and this and this. Uh, a couple of refined iron can go in here. And uh, finally, we need the carbon plates that I'm crafting up, which are almost done. Just waiting on a little bit more processing. One's complete. Got raw carbon fiber. And there we go. We've got our carbon plate. Perfect. Uh, so we'll toss these two in. Ah ha ha. Vajra. This thing is a little bit powerful. Just warning you, uh, you don't want to mess around with this thing unless you really know what you're doing. Why don't I go charge it up in my MFE down here? There we go, or MFSU. And I'll be back in just a moment. There we go. Nice and quick. One million EU. Yeah, quite a bit. 
right? Uh, now that's not gonna last us all that long, so we're probably gonna wanna get a gravity suit. But the cool thing about the Vajra is that it can mine pretty much anything almost instantly. Uh, that includes everything from wood to dirt. And just watch yourself. It's also a pretty good weapon. Haha. -ha. So, I mean, it's, it, it's pretty much an, an uber tool. Wherever you click, it's gonna destroy. See? Something along those lines. Ha! <laughs> Craziness, right? So, very nice tool. Don't recommend you using it in your house. Uh, I would highly recommend that you have a separate tool in your inventory ready to go for whenever you want to do things in the house. Because if you're in your house and you accidentally click somewhere you don't want to, like for example on a barrel, I've seen people do that and it's not pleasant. So why don't I clean up a little bit of this area here and uh, I just want to make it a little bit smaller. But you should pretty quickly be able to see why I wanted this set up the way it is. Because I can now just go like this and not have to worry about uh, the slowdown you get from flying while mining. See? Nice and quick. So it makes for, uh, you know, cleaning this kind of thing up a little bit easier. Now, I'm still not good with the jetpack. So maybe, because I made it so easy to make all this stuff, other stuff, maybe I want to make a gravity suit. You can also see how quickly the power drained. I just went through 500,000 EU. Like, that's a lot, right? I'm almost half empty on this voucher thing. So if you want to be able to mine with any kind of duration and be able to last a little bit longer, you're probably going to want to get yourself some kind of energy storage. Be uh, a lap pack, but that only stores 600,000, so that's not going to give you much extra uh, duration. You're probably going to want to get the ultimate lap pack, okay? So let's take a look at that. Ultimate lap pack. Stores 10 million EU, but there's no flight on that. My flight comes from my backpack uh, on my back, so I'm going to need the gravity chest plate. This guy requires an ultimate lap pack, uh, a bunch more superconductors, it requires a quantum suit body armor, it requires the gravitron engines, and the HV transformer. I mean, it's expensive, right? I'm not going to lie to you guys. Look at all these stuff you need here. Some Tesla coils for each of these graviton electron engines. You need uh, more superconductors, the cooling core, which requires 60k coolant cells, advanced heat exchangers. I mean, heat capacitive reactor plating iridium plates crazy how much stuff is required uh, just to get yourself a gravity chest plate but it's a very powerful and fun tool and I want one so I'm gonna make it but uh, crafting is a little bit boring so I'm gonna do most of the crafting of this thing off camera and I will be back uh, along the way just to show you guys uh, a step or two just to show you where you know I'm making progress I guess the first thing I should do is get this ultimate lap pack so that's gonna require six lapatron crystals uh, and an iridium plate that shouldn't be too bad, and a superconductor, all of which I can pretty much make uh, automatically. So we can do that, and we can do the iridium plate. Excellent. You can see it's already crafting some for the superconductor. Pretty cool. All right, so I'll be back in a moment, like I said, when I'm done crafting. All right, so stage one, getting the uh, backpack. So put this guy in here with all this stuff. We'll even have to pull you out because you're going to need this. Uh, let's see, lap pack, right? Six of you guys. That should be working. I might have to do it manually though. Let's see. Yep, for some reason I had to do that manual. No big deal though. I've got the ultimate lap back. Perfect. Stage one complete. Well guys, I'm part of the way there. I just made my very first gravitation engine. Uh, so that's a bit of the way to go. I need another one though. Ah, this is a crazy recipe. And theoretically, this should be the second gravitation core. Excellent. We're getting close, guys. All right, now I just need to make myself uh, one more HV transformer. And I think we're done here. Do we have four superconductors remaining? I do. Perfect. All right, be right there. All right, let's see. HV transformer, quantum bodysuit armor, superconductors, uh, gravity engines, and the ultimate lap pack here. All right, again, it looks like uh, it doesn't like the damage values in this thing, so let's pull these out and do this manually, okay? Uh, I might be able to, sh no, I can't shift click it. All right, no problem. These guys go here. Believe me, this is like one of the craziest recipes you'll ever do. There we go, gravity chest plate, excellent. Uh, now this guy stores 10 million EU, so make sure you have plenty of power gen when you're gonna do something like this, but you can see it here getting drained out very quickly. It's gonna pretty much completely drain my MFSU here. No big deal though, I've got plenty of power between my nuclear plant and everything else. So the cool thing about the gravity chest plate, besides it storing 10 million EU, besides it allowing me to fly pretty easily, I'm gonna pop you off, put you on. Oh man, I look cool. All right. Uh, so let's do this. Jetpack on. 
you have to change my hotkeys. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, the only problem, by the way, is that it was my uh, torsoed armor that had the energy in it. I guess I had the elite energy in here. Yeah, let's see if we can salvage this. Cross your fingers that I get this HP capacitor back. I, of course, did not. So I need to install one in the power armor legs. Let me go take care of that because uh, right now I can't move around at all too well unless I have my uh, tool equipped here. See? Yeah, not good. All right, got myself a gravity suit. I've been wanting one of these for a while. Gravitation engine on, and now the gravity suit works just like uh, creative mode flight. A little bit different from uh, you know the way the other flight mode works with the uh, MFF or the uh, modular power suits. The other cool thing here is you notice my badge would just recharge completely. Yeah, that's because that's exactly what this does. Is it supplies power to the Vajra as well as the flight. So you'll notice that I'm quickly draining energy out of my gravity chest plate, both due to flight mechanics and due to uh, the fact that I'm using the Vajra, but no big deal. All right, now let's. Start Start building out a really cool area here to work with. All right, how do you guys feel about this room for a mob spawner? I think it looks perfect. In fact, so perfect that I'm going to go ahead and place down the filler and probably lose a couple landmarks in the process. No big deal. All right, uh, filler is ready to go. We're going to set this guy to uh, make a room for me. Nice square location. We can get the energy tesseract, and we're probably going to also want this guy laid down, ready to get some smooth stone in there. And like I said, as soon as I do this, it should start refilling with smooth stone almost instantly. There it is. Cool. So uh, energy tesseract, you're ready to go. I'm gonna set you to main power. Check and go. Beautiful. So just a little bit more smooth stone. Oh yeah, we're definitely going to have a lot of mobs in here in just a moment. Because, yeah, we've already done it. Alright, let's uh, clear this thing out. See how quick it was to break that? That's why I love this thing. Get back here, you. Filler, bricks. Good, I got it all. Uh, where's my wrench to? Uh, should be in here. Good. Didn't want to lose that thing. All right. Uh, so how do we do? Probably pretty good. We've also done it probably so well uh, that we probably have a lot of bad guys in there at the moment. Let's see. Is that the case? Yes. Ha. See? Look how well this thing works. Oh, boy. <laughs> it works really well. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, you know, go ahead and clear that up a little bit. I'm going to sneak into the overworld and borrow myself a little bit of glass to make this a little bit safer let's say while i'm working on it so we'll just get like 128 glass that should be good for now be right back all right looks a little bit better now uh just cleared up some of the terrain on top we'll turn this back into smooth stone in a bit but i want to keep the room lit up while i do the work of getting the lights set up and everything so i'm just going to run in there and kill everything real fast portable hole wise But you can see how much fun we could have with this room already. Did you see how many mods we got spawned in here? Like crazy amounts. Um, and that was just a few seconds of darkness. Very cool. All right, let's see how I make out with some uh, white Lumar, which you guys know is just uh, the color white, so bone meal in this case, and red and glowstone, uh, and some glass panes. Do I have enough? Nah, probably not even close. How am I for glass in here? Eh, I could probably use a little bit more. Let's craft up, I don't know, 64 of them just for fun. So what I'm getting myself is a, a decent amount of white lamps. Okay, these guys, as you would know, uh, respond to a redstone signal and emit a pretty good amount of light. Something along these lines, okay? So uh, lamp there, redstone signal, boom. Nice and bright. So that's going to be in the room making sure that uh, our mobs aren't spawning when we don't want them to. Because, you know, we want our mobs to, you know, stay away until we're ready to flick a lever Turn off the lights, and then boom, instant mob spawn. Should be really cool. Uh, so let's see. There should be a little bit more glass in here now. I'll finish this up, and then we'll be right back. All right, now you guys should be familiar with the F7 function. Uh, if we close up the ceiling here. There we go. Uh, I think I'm even going to close it up as far as back here, just to make sure no residual light getting in causes me any trouble. 
we go. Uh, so we should be able to hit F7 here and see that there's plenty of room for mobs to spawn. But uh, if we grab some levers, we can demonstrate the effect of mobs not being able to spawn just like that. Perfect. So that actually does supply a decent amount of light to this area. So the next spot we're probably going to want to set up shop is right here. So let's see, I am probably made more lights than I really needed to, but that's not a big deal. Ta-da! Perfect. So if I set up lamps in this pattern here, now how many blocks do we have separate? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six blocks apart from each other. That should be sufficient. Uh, oh yeah, you know what? The lamp thing, I didn't really need to cover up the ceiling, did I? No, probably not. All right. Well, I need to cover it up anyway because I'm almost done, but here we go. I forgot it doesn't factor in sunlight, but no problemo. We also want to make sure it looks nice, right? Now, I didn't really count out to make sure that I was being exact here, but one, two, three, four, five. Oh, you know what? We needed to go back one further. No biggie. All right, I'll be back in just a second. All right, I think that looks pretty sharp, right? In the end, I wound up going uh, five blocks apart, just like that, uh, and it made it so that I could have a nice, even number of lights in the room. Perfect. So now I can cover up the ceiling again and get back all my glass viewers. Let's just get a few stacks here and close this up. Boom. So of course we're not going to leave a dozen torches in the middle of the room here, or uh, levers for that matter. That was just for demonstration purposes. Let's get ourselves the red alloy wire that we're actually going to use to control all this stuff. So uh, I think right here would be a nice way to come out. And uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, dig down underground. Let's see. Right here. All right, we're going to want to run some wiring like so. Um, do I want to use just this red alloy wiring? Yeah, that should be fine. We'll do it for now, and then if we decide to change it up a little bit later, not a big problem. All right, I am just running the red alloy wire like so. And that should give us all we need. I probably need a little bit more of this stuff, don't I? Probably. All right, let me go craft some more and be right back. All right, so I want to use a lever here to control this mechanism. Now, I was actually surprised. A lot of people commented on my, uh, you know, a video or two back about the uh, mob spawners. They were surprised I didn't use uh, computer craft monitors. And to be honest with you, I was kind of thinking about using them, but a lot of people don't like seeing the programming, so I figured, eh, let's just do it with the, with the basic lasers or, uh, or levers and stuff. But then, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, man, why not use those computer craft monitors? So I might upgrade this at some point to use the monitors, but at the very least for now we're going to do the lever thing so we've got red alloy wire running here and this guy is going to activate the lights inside okay so come over here we're going to break all this stuff away and uh all the lights are staying on obviously because of the redstone signal being applied to them there we go perfect now i want to make sure that this room gets nice and dark so i'm going to hmm Looking for something that I can see through, but light doesn't really get through. I have an idea for something that I could do with that, uh, but I'm not going to be able to implement it just yet. So for now, uh, let's just pop through here, grab ourselves some of the glass viewers that I put away. That should do. So now, two things. Number one, uh, mobs don't tend to spawn uh, when you're right next to them. But I think standing back here should get me a decent spawning area in there. Number two, the light is going to come through these glass viewers. So it will prevent mobs from spawning right in the front here. But we should see this happening in the back. All I got to do is flick this lever off. Boom. Nice and dark in there. Look at that. Now you can already see some endermen spawning. Beautiful. Spiders showing up back there. Excellent. Now if we turn the light back on... Look at that. Look how many mobs spawn in just a few seconds. So just think about what's going to happen when it's truly dark throughout the entire room. Yeah. Awesome, right? So let's go in there and take care of these guys. And I will be right back. All right, guys, so you ready for the solution to how are we going to be able to see into this room but not let the light from the outside day 
in. All right, here's the trick. You ready? Uh, I'm actually going to make a little bit more of these. Half slabs um, apparently seem to uh, block light. So what I could set up is something along these lines. If I put half slabs here and half slabs here, uh, these guys are acting like full blocks and blocking the light from coming through on both of these. Okay. Now to make it even nicer, I could probably just put half slabs like right here. And ta-da, you can see that it's actually a little bit darker in that room now, just because of the fact that there's no sunlight coming in. See, look, light, okay? Look at the uh, lighting on the ground. Watch what happens when I put this down. Boom, just a little bit darker. You can kind of see it if you're looking through the glass right there. Okay, let's look one more time. See how much darker it got? That's because the sunlight is not getting in there. But I have a viewport access, so uh, this should allow me to flip the lever, boom and kind of watch through here as mobs spawn. Excellent. Nice. I'm liking it. Now, uh, the only other thing is uh, the range at which mobs can spawn from the player. Uh, I think I'm a little too close to this thing, so let's set up something. If I just move further away from this room and then get a little bit closer again. All right, still not enough. Let's do this. Way back here, and then Flying back over. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, they can see me, though. That's dangerous. <laughs> I wonder if the spider can get through. I'm not sure. Can they shoot me through here? Now they can see me, so that's probably not ideal. But, hey, still, I'm pretty pleased with the way this looks. Oh, yeah, they can shoot me. <laughs> that's neat, though, huh? Yeah, I definitely like the way that looks. I don't suppose I could squeeze glass viewers in here. I'm sure I can't, right? No, because it's definitely two halves. Would be nice though if, uh, hmm. I wonder. Anyway, we're done with the spawning of enemies, so I can just, you know, go over here and attack them. Of course, they're lighting on fire because I'm attacking them, not because of anything else. Uh, creeper. That's probably not ideal. Definitely don't want that to continue to happen. But at the very least, I can sneak a look at what's going on in there and, uh, you know, take care of things. Excellent. All right, let me take a look at uh, how we might want to start automatically killing these guys, and then I'll be back. All right, while this does seem to work, it just, it's not perfect for me. So I'm going to fall back to a method I've used in the past, which is to stick with the glass because, you know, the creepers won't try and blow up when they get near it, and the skeletons won't be able to shoot me, but it's still letting light in. So we need to uh, enclose this area a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, real simple, just like this. Perfect. All right, so uh, let's close this up, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so here is the plan. You come through this wall right here, and uh, close this thing up, and ta-da, it's nice and dark as soon as that portable hole closes behind me. Then we can flip the lever, turns off all the lights, and we should start getting some mob spawns in there. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, as you can see, we definitely have some action here. Ha <laughs> ha. What's up? Mr. Zombie. All right, so we got some enemies to spawn. That's good news. Creepers first, of course. All right, so enemies are spawning. Looks like this thing's doing what we want it to do. Beautiful. All right, guys, one more part of this contraption. I'm just slightly annoyed by something that's not working as well as I would have wanted it to. Uh, so I'm building a little contraption right here. Let's see if we come over here, swap this guy out for this for a moment. There we go. Uh, if I turn the lever off here, I'm still within that range, I think, of um, mobs not spawning because a player is too new nearby. You can see there's really nothing spawning in here. I kind of have to just go a little bit further outside this room to get mobs to spawn. And I really want to take advantage of this whole dark room thing and make it so that lots of mobs can spawn. So what I'm setting up here is the following. I'd like to have um, a portal spawner. We're going to use what color? We can use light blue. Yeah. Well, do portals close when the power is cut? Yes. Light blue. Okay. Uh, we're going to do two things. First off, we're going to activate this guy. I probably need my screwdriver here with a receiver. Okay. We'll rotate this thing to frequency, I don't know, 100. Why not? Sure. Sounds good. Um... Yeah, frequency 100, we'll label this mob portal. 
Okay. And then uh, we're going to have a pressure plate right here. And underneath, oh, yeah, not right there. Let me back my portal spawner. Yes, and light blue. We're going to want the pressure plate right. Hmm. See, I don't like this now. I'm going to have to expand this a little bit. All right, let's try this again. Doing the same thing. Just uh, putting the receiver and transmitter set up right here. Make the sky 100. I wonder if I'll ever get through a series without just jumping around randomly in the wireless frequencies. I'm going to make the sky yes and light blue. And then we'll have a pressure plate right here. And then down here, we can uh, probably have this thing set up with a transmitter like this. We'll rotate it around for frequency 100. There we go. Now to do the same thing on the other side. So what I want to be able to do is um, come uh, into this room, turn off the light, and then step through the portal gun portal real quick. Uh, just to let the mob spawn, okay? So we'll put this guy right here. It doesn't really matter where in this room. And we'll make it the dark blue color with uh, the pressure plate. We'll have the receiver with 100. Underneath the pressure plate, we'll have the transmitter with 100. And then... We can step right through. Cool? Beautiful. So they're pretty close near to each other, so there shouldn't be much lag problem. So we turn off the light, and mobs aren't spawning. Uh, a little bit in the back there, you'll get some spawns, but like really far away. Nobody much closer than this. You can also see with F7 here that even though I have torches in this room in the far back corners here, it's not enough to prevent mobs spawning. In fact, mobs could spawn right here. I just don't think it's too likely. I mean... Put that there. That probably makes it perfectly safe in this room. All right. So uh, now we can step through. Give it a few seconds. Make sure mobs spawn. Uh, we can even check F3. We can see that there's probably some entities off in this direction. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. And then back through here. And oh, yeah. Lots of bad guys. Perfect. So I think we have a pretty solid system. All right, guys. So I think we have a pretty efficient mob generation and spawning system here. Uh, I could probably do with putting a couple pieces of stone around here just to make sure that you know I don't accidentally fall off the edge like that. And uh, otherwise, we're pretty solid at this point. So what are we going to do next? Well, I'm glad you asked. Next, we want to kill things automatically. So now we've got them spawning. It's all controllable through levers. Okay, so lever comes on. Flip the lever, mob spawn, flip it again. They stop spawning, but they're still in there. Then we need to automatically kill them. Now, there's a couple fun ways we could go about doing this. We've got everything from Tesla coils to Steve's carts to deployers to, like, all kinds of stuff to automatically kill mobs. So we're going to want to make sure maybe we might just for fun have two or three different ways to kill things. That could be cool. Uh, but don't worry, we'll definitely come up with some good stuff. But for now, what we definitely could do if we wanted to, we could abuse this room to make some um, Tier 5 Soul Shards if we really wanted to. So maybe I want to get some crystal, uh, some of those soul shards for like skeletons or for zombies or uh, maybe even for endermen. I could do that here. Obviously endermen would probably be a little bit easier to get from the end, but yeah. Those are all their options. So you can either just use this room for simple manual killing. And again, we're going to have the auto killing thing uh, set up on ta-da, the uh, switch as well. So by the end of this build, you'll still be able to use this, all right? So let's head back to the overworld and take a look at some of the different things we're going to have to wait till next episode to really get playing with, all right? So here goes nothing. So one offensive weapon we might want to play with is the laser turtle. Now, in uh, you know the, the past uh, episodes where I was building the um, offensive weapon in the end, I just used lasers and deployers. But the downside of that is that they need to be recharged. Um, so there's no automated way to recharge them. But with uh, laser turtles, they actually just run on the uh, energy of uh, the turtle. So as long as you give it some coal to recharge it, you'll be in good shape. Uh, now, there is another way to go about it, and we will be utilizing it most likely. Uh, but what I want to just check here is make sure that this turtle, uh, I want to see what kind of range the mining laser has on it. Okay, so let's just plop it down right here. All right, this should do. I could probably even put them here for now. All right, turn right. And we'll refuel. 
Now, this is my place away turtle, by the way. I was just too lazy to make another one, but you get the point. Uh, so what's the deal here? If I um, do turtle.attack. Oh, that was pretty good, actually. That was really good. I wasn't sure if this thing would be able to reach, but it looks like it kind of does. So let's set this up. I want to see what kind of range this thing has. Turtle.attack. All right, so it's pretty darn close to the entire length of the room. Ooh, if only this room was a little bit smaller, then it would be perfect. But probably too late for that, right? Probably. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll tweak it down just a little bit next episode. Uh, but I think Turtle Dig has a much shorter range laser, right? Turtle Dig, yeah, a bit shorter. Turtle Attack has the longer range one which seems to go almost the length of the room. Man, that's really close. So what I could do is just make this room a little bit thinner, um, you know, but I kind of like the size of it. So we'll have to see. For now though, I think that's one optional way of killing things. There's gonna be more. Uh, I wanna have like two or three different fun ways, all controlled maybe by a computer monitor, maybe controlled by levers, we'll have to see. But we'll have different ways of killing the mobs in here. Again, just for fun. Uh, and then of course, in the end, we're gonna want an automated way to collect the items that get dropped by the mobs because in the end, we wanna make sure we have a bunch of items like uh, you know the mobs are dropping. But really, it's more for fun. Anyway though, we do gotta wrap up the episode unfortunately. So, Dire Wolf 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Come back next time. We're going to have a handful of uh, laser turtles to attack enemies. We're going to have a way to automatically recharge them. That's probably not going to cost too much. We're also going to uh, see if we can do anything about just this little bit of uh, blocks here that aren't getting cleaned up. You know, if I just had this guy one block in, right, and just, you know. Yeah, it's bugging me that it's almost the length of the room that it can mine, right? But, oh well, we'll see. Like, if, if the walls were here, and the walls were here, then his turtle.attack would be able to mine everything everywhere. Which would just be so cool. Oh well, no big deal. We'll figure it out. In the end, it'll be a lot of fun. All right, guys, take it easy.